Hello everyone, I'm Roderick and I'm going to be speaking um, about something that I, I often talk about and I think it's a necessary thing when you're living a spiritual life. Um, I'm going to be sharing from my heart and, and from the inspiration of God concerning prayer. Prayer. Prayer is no different than what I'm doing now. I'm talking to you. I'm speaking to you. And, and that's what prayer is. We're speaking to a higher power. We're speaking to God. Uh, prayer takes quite a bit of humility. Prayer uh, is something that God has uh, favored us with. And the word says men shall not uh, live by bread alone, but by every word, the word became prayer. So when you're strengthening your spiritual relationship, it takes uh, a great level of grace in humility. The Bible speaks of Elijah, a powerful prophet. He prayed that it wouldn't rain. Another time, he called down fire, um, but he was, according to the scripture, and we may get into that uh, in this hour, Elijah was a man like us. He was no different from you and I. Uh, let's look at prayer this way. You got a song. Let's pull out a song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Two people can sing that song. One can sing it with a conviction, uh, a conviction, a grace, uh, a reality of those words. Another person can sing it uh, simply for entertainment, uh, to sometimes hear themselves um, or sometimes to impress others. Have you ever seen that? One song, but two people singing it. Uh, one sings it for competition. You know, the word says, sing unto the Lord a new song. I was teaching music and and I remember, I remember saying, a new song doesn't mean new lyrics. Come on, think about it. A new song doesn't mean new lyrics. A new song means a conviction. And so when the word says, sing unto the Lord, as you study your word, you, you'll find that. Sing unto the Lord a new song. A new song. A new songs. New songs comes from new convictions. It comes from an awareness, a spiritual awareness of who God is first and from knowing who our Heavenly Father is, uh, we learn ourselves. I still believe in God. I believe that there are many uh, sides to God, male and female. Uh, I believe that there is a powerful way to God the greatest way to God is no different than a relationship, a marriage. You cannot have a successful marriage without talking. So it is with praying. You cannot have a relationship, regardless of what type of relationship it is, marriage, business, and so forth, or just a social relationship. It won't amount to anything unless there is a conversation. I often said, say this uh, in counseling others, those that receive it, and there are millions that do, and there are millions that don't. Now, I say this, and, and I want you to hear it. Don't just hear words. Hear the spirit of the words. Any conversation that you're not willing to have, whether it's in your marriage, uh, business, 
you're not willing to grow in that area. You can never grow in any area that you're not willing to converse about. You're not willing to talk about. You can never grow. So it is with prayer. So many people, and I love everybody, but so many people have confined themselves to a thought of God, conceived by the way they were raised. You know, and I, I, I love you, but listen, I shouldn't say but after I say I love you. I love you. However, I want you to understand what I mean when I say I love you. It means prepare yourself. Many of you are serving your mama and daddy's God. Many of you are serving uh, the God of your pastor, the God of your uh, of a grandmother, the God of uh, of a, a religious order. Uh, denomination. Some of you have served the God of Church of God in Christ for a long time. Some of you have served the God of the Baptist Church for a long time. I love all of you, preached in all of them. But listen, some of you are serving the, the God of the Presbyterian, the Catholic. You, you're serving a, a, a not Heavenly Father. You can get into serving, watch this, a persuasion a religious order. Look at our earth as we as we are seeing things that are happening. Some people are serving the God of racism, serving the God of bigotry. Uh, there are many gods, and that's what God said to Moses, tell them, uh, I, I am God. I am that I am. Have no other God before me. It's not a militant request. It is a love request. Have no other God before me. If you're in a relationship and you're in a marriage, you don't want, uh, let, come on, young people, you don't want your boyfriend always being emotionally tied to another girl. Come on, young lady. You don't want your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You, you don't want uh, uh, your girlfriend to be tied to another girl or man. If you're in a relationship, you want the attention. It should go both ways, both ways. Uh, uh, but you hear this. You don't want, uh, a husband don't want uh, a wife to be emotionally tied to other things. And a, a wife don't want her husband being emotionally tied to someone else other than God. So what about God? That's what prayer does. Prayer will cause us uh, to be uh, sensitive to spiritual things. Meditation uh, is a powerful form of prayer. Some of you pray, you talk, 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 talk. And, and, and sometimes you need to listen, 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 listen. Because uh, God has something to say. God can impress you emotionally, and out of that, words will develop from that emotion. Listen closely. Sometime through prayer, God will give you an impression of something. And through that impression, it will develop you. There are so many ways to grow spiritually. But we're going to get into some, some, some powerful things. And I jotted down some notes and and I'm one that likes to hear God uh, original. I, I like it hot off the grill. I, uh, I remember Jesus told his disciples, don't take a script with you. Don't take anything with you. Don't even, listen, just go. And he said in that same hour, I will open up your mouth and I will speak. Yes, 2 Timothy 2.15 says to study, to show yourself approved. Not to your bishop, not to your pastor, not to impress, but it says study to show yourself approved unto God so that we can be a worker in the kingdom of God. And so the Holy Spirit is able to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, God's word is not an opinion. Come on. God's word is not an opinion. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, sovereign. 
sovereign, if you own everything, if you own the universe and you own the seven seeds and you own the worlds that have not been discovered and uh, other life on other worlds, uh, you, your words are sovereign. You don't have to be in control when you own everything. Man wants to own, man wants the rights uh, to the earth. Uh, man wants to profit from the things of God without his wisdom. And this is why we have the, the mess we have now. But there's hope because we're actually at the end of the rule of a certain uh, uh, order. And there is a, you hear the new world order where there's a, there's a kingdom order. There's a government uh, that is by God and the government shall be upon his shoulders. God is arising in this time of people, man. I'm telling you, a people that possess some supernatural stuff, but they have the wisdom to know how to use it. That's been the problem of religion. People got a taste of God's power and just went bananas. And people start worshiping people instead of looking at the grace of God. Are you ready for prayer? Are you ready? Are you really ready to understand prayer? Now I want to talk about some things concerning prayer. And I think uh, one, of the, one of the books that uh, uh, I'll go to is the book of Romans. I think that's a powerful, one of the books of pa Apostle Paul and uh, who, who was so instrumental in the revelation and uh, uh, to help us understand uh, how this presence of God, it works. And let's go there uh, to Romans. Now, this verse here is a is a it impresses me and it it, it fascinates me uh, because of the Holy Spirit is the prayer. Say this: the Holy Spirit is the prayer. The prayer, one that prays, is the prayer and it prays. Think for a minute. Now, Romans 8, verse 26, I, I want you to look at it on this Sunday morning. It says, likewise, the spirit itself helpeth our infirmities. Those are those are spiritual uh, uh, things in us. Uh, just like you could be physically, you can catch a cold. Uh, you can catch a, uh, some people have sinus. Uh, uh, and at certain times of the year, that sinus would sort of rise up and, and, and things of that nature. But do you know your spirit body, you know, our spirit bodies, have infirmities, have issues, have uh, uh, spiritual sickness. Yeah, you can you can catch a physical physical uh, uh, sickness. God forbid. Uh, do you not know your spirit man has uh, things that need healing, and the only way it can be healed is watch this. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, the things that we are not strong in, things that we're weak in, things that we really, you know, it's a dangerous thing to think you know it all. That's not wisdom. Uh, wisdom comes through uh, the grace that is on, upon a he or her uh, uh, that's able to yield. It's like a person that's a, a professional a uh, uh, wrestler or a professional golfer or a professional pool player, chess player or sports or what have you, the person that, that will excel, whether it's gymnastics 
the person that will excel is the person that has to yield to the craft, to the uh, the sport uh, that they're in. And the person, uh, there are people who, the famous Bruce Lee, very uh, masterful in the art of karate and so forth, different forms of, of that art. Well, Bruce Lee was known uh, to be quick. He was known to be a person that could intimidate just by the meditation and stare. But he was so effective until he became a master. The Holy Spirit masters us in all areas. Now watch this, watch this. Likewise, Romans 8, 26, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Here comes an infirmity. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. I want you to I want you to really soak that in. Uh, excuse me. I want you to really soak that in. Is the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. And here is an infirmity. And it's, it will hinder us if we don't allow the helper to help. Because the Holy Spirit knows how to help. Say, help me, Holy Spirit. And you say, well, I, some people may say, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Oh, you want me to help you a little bit? If you don't, there may be somebody that don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Do you drink wine or beer or something like that? No condemnation, but listen to the principle. Mm -hmm. You go to a place and some places that sell them, they will have spirits. The word spirit uh, is to define uh, the product that is sold there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, get drunk, God forbid. You, well, if you've been drunk, there was another spirit that took you over. Some people are drunk with anger. Some people are drunk with drama. Some people are drunk with rebellion. They won't listen to anybody. If it sounds like truth, they reject it. Yeah, they're drunk. They have a, a spirit. They have another spirit. Come on. Scripture talks about people who've been intoxicated. One scripture said, be not drunk with wine. Didn't say don't drink it. Be not drunk with it. Now listen. So if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you really don't believe that you are alive. Yeah. You, 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 are you here? Then there's a spirit. There's a spirit that we're made of that causes us to breathe. You're not breathing on your own. Touch yourself. You can feel your heartbeat. It's not plugged in, but it's spiritually plugged in to our creator. You know how uh, uh, people are using cell phones that's from, uh, there's something that makes it work. I don't have time to get into that. That's from, uh, the motherland uh, that makes it work. Uh, matter of fact, the motherland takes care of the whole earth. And uh, uh, the world is about to be shocked. God's going to cause um, such an awakening and, and, and it's such a, it's, it's going to make you laugh the way God is going to flip the script, even in the election. Now, listen, you a bunch of people using cell phones. Yeah. But there is a, there's something that causes those cell phones to work. You can talk on it. You can, you can talk to people on it. Prayer is that powerful. 
Prayer is so powerful. I'm telling you something. I've experienced this and I am experiencing this. Prayer can be so powerful until you have such a sensitivity to the spirit realm, until you walk in prayer, you become prayer. Now watch this. The Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. We don't know what to pray for as we walk. Here it comes. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hmm. There is a, a supernatural prayer that can't be uttered. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a groaning. It's a it's a you women, you mothers, you precious queens and and princess. Um, you that have children. There was a groan. I've witnessed all of my children being born. There was a groan that you have and you had uh, during the the pain and 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 as you were delivering your your precious child you can remember there were things that you couldn't actually say that was deep inside you there was a pain that you couldn't describe when prayer reaches that point then it reaches god Listen to this. God only hears stimulated prayer. <laughs> he only hears prayer that is stirred up. Remember in the beginning of this live broadcast Facebook around the world. Listen. One song, two people sing it. One sings Amazing Grace with a conviction. The other does it just to be singing for competition or, or what have you. It's not doing anybody good. But the person that sings Amazing Grace after coming through a trauma, after being delivered and seeing miracles, they sing it, uh, stimulated, aroused. There's, there's, a, there's a Greek word, arousia, parousia. Something that is aroused. And when you are aroused, then it moves God. I don't believe God just hear prayer, just simply just saying something. Or you know how people do, they wait to pray when they get in trouble. Now, I believe God has mercy upon us in times of need. But I, I believe that there comes a time when God is challenging us when it comes to prayer. Now, this is one thing I want you to meditate on. Part of it is sad and part of it uh, will help you. you. You ever ask God to do something for you? God, I need this. I need you to move. I need, uh, whether it's material, uh, whether it's a, a husband or a wife or, or a, a mother or what have you, you ever just prayed and you wanted God to move for you, you might have wanted a certain job, or you might have wanted another house, or you might have, it doesn't matter, you might have something that has happened that you need God to move, uh, someone that is sick or someone, any type of prayer, you ever been there when you wanted God to help you, listen to this, God uses people to answer prayer many times. I want to go to this scripture. Let, let's start off with uh, Jeremiah 29. That's what I want. Jeremiah 29. I want to look at this. Let's look at verse 11. Watch this. Jeremiah 29. I'm going to start at verse 11. 
It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, uh, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now watch what he says. Then you will call upon me and, and you will go and pray to me. And I will hearken to you. That's verse 12. Verse 13, Jeremiah 29. Yeah, this is good stuff. He says, and you will seek me and find me. Here it comes. You will seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Now, you know earlier that uh, we just read Romans 8, 26. We don't know what to pray for as we are, but the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmity. God said, listen, I know you. I think peace toward you. If you seek me, you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart, with all of you. Everything about you. When you seek for me, I love you. You can't seek for God when you're filled with all of these rebellious attitudes, all of this stuff where you, you want God to answer your prayer. Israel was praying to be delivered from Pharaoh. God answered their prayer because he sent a man. Then I some some of you women, God, I want a husband that, that seek God. I want a husband that loves God. I want a husband that really know how to treat me. I want a husband. I want to say something, and, and, and I like being an oddball. I've always been, but I'm comfortable being in the middle. I don't like the far left. Not politically speaking. I don't like extremes. I like to stay right in the middle. You know, you know how a lot of men been raised not to cry. I wasn't. Me and my brothers wasn't. But some were. You know, a lot of men been raised to know how to treat a wife when you get married, a girl, and you know. The chivalry was created by good parents that taught their children how to uh, uh, treat their spouses. That's good stuff. But listen closely. But many times, women were not taught how to treat their husbands. Don't say there was because you wouldn't have the biggest mess that you have in relationship. On the dominant, it's been talked to men. Now, I'm not talking about ignorance. I'm not talking about men that dog women. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking normalcy. Uh, normally, uh, uh, we have been taught, and that's good. Women have been taught how they should be treated. And it's a dominant thing in that because miserable mothers that went through bad relationships did not, they were not heavy on how to treat a husband. Many cases, uh, we talking 40 years of counsel and I've seen it. And uh, uh, they were not taught because the mama was upset with their daddy. And so that developed a generation of angry young ladies who grew up to be angry women and then, sadly, angry grandmas. Ah, uh, yeah. There's hope for you. Hope is talking to you. Not Christ, but a son. Not the only one. Some of you prayed for an answer last night. Hello, the answer, and 
And, and so the desire to be treated right overwhelmed and superseded over that young lady learning how to treat a good man. And that's where you get the statement, a good man is hard to find. In many cases, a good woman is hard to find. Who can find a virtuous woman? It's priceless because it's valuable. A virtuous woman is a disciplined woman. You don't get to be virtuous, ladies, without discipline. You're not virtuous because you're a woman. Men, you're not a good man because you're a man. I, I, I often say this, and, and I, I want to say it. Do you know you have to be prepared to get an answer from God? And God will use many things to prepare us for the answer. So there's been an unbalance, a false balance in the teachings. The scripture says older women teach the young. But in many cases, older, miserable women have taught the young. Some women have been taught that their vagina is their pocketbook. Cha-ching. Some women have been taught by their, their mothers and, and so forth how to be uh, religious prostitutes. Some women have been taught to be a nice whore, undetected. So it brought about a lot of uh, uh, promiscuity. And then if a woman is, is raised up with no discipline, now I'm not talking about somebody just telling you what not to do. In many cases, they let you have sex at home. Come on. Long as you're doing it in the house and I know where you are, you can do anything that you want to. When they grow up and get married, they're not going to listen to a man that brings principle. They're not going to listen. And so many of you, there's been some, some young ladies who wanted me to marry them. And I'm very particular about that. I, I could not marry them because I didn't want uh, that man or in, some, in many cases that woman to be miserable. See, if you're raised up and been enabled, listen, it's got a lot to do with prayer because it, if you're praying and you're looking at God like you've been taught to look at man, then you're going to make God, in your mind, a sugar daddy. All God becomes is somebody uh, uh, that does something for you. Come on, somebody that gives you money. Somebody that gives you a house. Somebody that gives you a car. And all God becomes is a, is a heavenly sugar daddy. To many. To many. So... What you have is a retarded, spiritually retarded uh, outlook on God because you were raised with a gimme, I deserve it attitude. And this is what destroys homes. So in order to pray, this is why God said in Jeremiah 29, you seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Only then. When you search for me with all your heart. Let's go to another scripture on prayer. This is good stuff. I'm eating it. I hope you're eating it. You got your... You got your uh, you got your spirits open. Let's look at this one. This is this is good. Uh, James chapter five. Let's look at this. Look at verse thirteen. James five and thirteen. Watch this. It says, "Is any among you afflicted?" 
Is anybody afflicted this morning? It said, let him pray. Pray. If, you're, if you don't feel good, if you're sick, pray. Yeah, even now, just, just pray as you listen. Just even now. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray or her pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Verse 14, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord. Now watch this. Now here's verse 15. I want you to get this. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Let's stop there. Not just any prayer. Not just uh, some good words or, or a yell or a scream, you know, something like that. Or somebody, you, you've seen them in churches, they try to pray so deep and so people can say, ooh, didn't she pray? That's not prayer. That's entertainment. And religion has a lot of entertainment prayer. Religion, entertainment. It said, let the elders pray. And it says, verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. I, I'm a witness of this. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven. And that's something about prayer. Prayer gets you in right fellowship with God. You feeling out of place? Pray. You feeling strange? Pray. Pray. You don't like to take correction? Pray. Look at verse 16. James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. I, I, I need healing. I need God to fix this. Some people got to fix this mind. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Well, he tells you how to fix it. He tells you to pray. And then part of prayer, I told you earlier, communication, any area in your life, in your marriage, that you're not willing to talk about and communicate about, you'll never grow in. You will never, I don't care if you, listen, you will never grow in any area of your life, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a billionaire or a pennionaire. You will never grow in your life without communicating. You better find somebody and <laughs> when you're raised and being enabled, it leads you to narcissism. We see it on television. We see it in government. Listen again. When you were raised, if you were raised, listen closely, because many of you right now, you, you are, you, you're being delivered. You just don't know it. You're being delivered by truth. Truth told by somebody that speak it in love. That's the purest form of truth. Someone that speaks it in love, not in religion. Not in favoritism. You're raised and you were enabled. Something is, that is something is in you that's hindering your prayers. When you when you're raised in an enabled environment, you develop a stubbornness from things that happen. And you have become of mature age and the effects 
of, of the things that happen to you now becomes a weapon that you use on someone else. It could be a wife or husband. It could be a business. It could be a relative. It could be in business. Now you have weaponized this enablement and it has become like an atomic bomb. Anything that you get in, I don't care how pretty it look on the outside, you are destroyed. You will invent a weapon of spiritual destruction, emotional destruction, and you will be walking around like a time bomb and still seeking to be enabled by husband or wife. And what happens is, you say, am I a narcissist? Am I a narcissist? Here's a test. If you cannot stand, here's the key. You got to really listen. How do you know if you got the spirit of narcissism? If you are close to someone and they correct you and you dismiss it, and you look back, it's been years of the same dismissal and rejection. That is a spirit of error, narcissism. Now watch this. Here's the, here's the balance. You go to somebody else that you approved of, and most likely they've been enabled, and you'll receive it from them. Oh. This is good. This is some vitamins that, that will strengthen your immune, spiritual immune system. Yeah, we got a spiritual immune system. Some of you are pop a vitamin C like you done went crazy. You are pop a herb and you drink tea if you think it'll help you. But when God sends somebody that is in your face and they speak to you in truth, oh no, you won't receive it because the spirit that you have developed that you use as a weapon when you get with people that don't know you, oh, you're the sweetest thing that walked the earth. Why? They don't know you. So that spirit, let's go back. One song, two people singing it. You will seek to impress others that don't know you. That's why I believe in being consistent in speaking sound truth. If you're going to get answers to your prayer, you got to be willing to accept the people that God will put in your life. Well, I don't like the way they say it. Who cares? I don't like the way he or she talked to me. Who cares? There's some things you eat that you don't like the way it tastes, but it's good for you. And then religion, religion, the spirit of religion will have you, uh, oh, oh, this is good for me. Uh, this vegetable is good for me. Let me put a little sugar in it. Now see, there goes the devil. You cannot accept raw things that will help a raw problem. God's trying to alter your attitude. You know, some people live and die with a bad attitude. And then they'll sit back and they would be the old me, oh my, oh, this is happening to me. They watch people that complain a lot. Then, if listen, it is your job when you hear someone speak to you especially about someone else, you need to make sure that you're giving sound spiritual advice. It's like when we were young, if an if a auntie saw us or anybody saw us cutting up, they would get us as though they were our parents. And then they would tell our parents. Then we get a double, double uh, uh, blessing. You understand? We, we get chastised. Double time. Why? 
a lot of people, when they hear stuff, they, they take it and they just make you worse than you are. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. You take a woman that just got out of a relationship and she'll call it bad. I'm not talking about some nut that's abusing her or abusing him. I'm talking about normalcy, a relationship. And she go to her girlfriends. They make movies. Reality TV shows it all the time. You know, here's a woman this crying. This, oh, he hurt me. He did this. He cheated on me. Can I tell y'all women a reality? I'm only talking to women that want to grow. Now, you that don't want to grow, I love you so much, but I can't help you. But you, you women that want to grow, listen to this. Some people are hurt by truth. You know there's a lie that's been told. The truth hurt. No, the truth heals. I just read it to you. Confess your faults to one another, then you may be healed. Truth does not hurt. If it does, it only hurts pride. So you got this woman, she cried, oh, he just treated me so bad. And you get a bunch of other miserable women and they just will just, just pamper that little spirit. She won't tell you that she's been a booger. And some of you silly women, you listen to any news. I, you know, in this era of uh, so-and-so just pound the phrase fake news, the only fake news are invented lies. A lie is fake news. And then when a liar keeps saying fake news, you know something is wrong. Evil communication corrupt good manner. It's something when everybody around you almost going to jail and then you you just innocent. Something's wrong. And so it is. When people are enabled, all of this stuff hinders your prayers. And then you be walking around, want God to do this, want God to do that, want God to change this and change that, and you want God to fix everything but you. I love you so much. If, if I didn't, I I would just tell you something to make you smile. I would tell you something to make you happy. i never forget a woman told me in a meeting one time, she said, Prophet? I said, my name's Roger. But she just kept, Prophet? A pastor? I said, my name is Roger. She said, I want you to preach me happy tonight. I want you to preach. I've tried to preach the hell out of her. I tried to preach until she started frowning. Why? Because it's not my job to make you happy. Find it in the scripture. It's not a pastor's job to make you happy. So marriage, for example, the scripture talks about that your prayers be not hindered. You see that word prayers in everything. What keeps prayers answered in a relationship, a marriage? Listen, unity. Unity. Somebody needs this. You. So women, it's no use of you. I grew up hearing uh, women stand up and testify. You know these. Testify. Pray for my unsaved husband. I heard it so much. And as I grew up, I found out why. Because the wives were more subject to the pastor than their own husband. And that man didn't want anything to do with that church or that woman. I used to hear it all the time. This mother, she got a position in the church. Pray for my husband that he gets saved. And I just heard it all. The but as I matured, I understand why. 
because that same woman was not acting like she was a true worshiper of God in front of that husband. Because if she did, it would happen like my mother and my father. My mother won my father, who became a powerful prophet and was a prophet before he uh, got back in fellowship with God. My mother, our mother, but just personally speaking, she lived a pure life. Virtuous. Physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually until it won our father back to God. Women! Those women that were standing up testifying, God saved my husband. They were boogers. That man saw them more loyal, as I said earlier, to something else, emotionally tied to the church. I've seen that. I'm not talking about anything I made up. I've seen it with these eyes. But by the grace of God, Our mother gave an example. So are you praying? And you want a breakthrough. You want a breakthrough. You want God to do something special for you. Yeah. You know what the answer to that prayer is? Do something special for God. Anything that you want from God, do it back to God. And I promise you, your prayer would be answered in a powerful way. Anything that you want God to do, do it for him. You say, if I'm praying for a job, how can I give God a job? Easy. Seek it with all your heart. Yeah, you can employ God. By giving him all of you, and then he will be a butler to you. I'll tell you something I, I witnessed and am witnessing. Let's look at this scripture. Let's go to this. Psalms 1, Psalm 102. Let's go. I like the book. The book of Psalm is so comforting. Psalm 102. Watch this. It says, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Earlier I said, you know, people get in trouble, they need God. He will not deny you. But there's no sense of you being destituted all the, all the time, especially when God has put in your life. Ask yourself, is there anybody in my life, go ahead, ask yourself, that I know going to give me wise counsel. They're not going to give me uh, he says, she said counsel. They're not going to give me an emotional counsel. They're going to give me some wisdom. If, you, if that person faced came up before you, you need to call him or her because that person is designed to be a help to you in getting answers to prayer. I, I received calls, and I, I don't credit myself, I promise you. I received calls from around the world of people that received godly counsel and saw breakthrough as God used this vessel, as I continue to seek the wisdom of God. Because I'm not that smart, but the wisdom of God is. Think of people that God has put in your life. There are at least three or four, especially uh, a major one that God has put in your life 
that God will give you breakthroughs through. I'm not talking about people that, that, that want you to give them some money when they pray for you. I'm not talking about them. You don't even need them. I'm not talking about people that want you to think they're so great in God. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about people, ask yourself today, spend time. Who do I know that I sense that God will use to help me? I don't plan this on Sundays at 12. I don't plan this. A lot of people get preached at, but they never get talked to. I'm talking to you. And you know that there are people that has answers for you. Now, don't do like a lot of people. Find them somebody that's going to say what I feel they should say. No, you, you can throw them away. Because that's witchcraft. King Saul of the Old Testament went to a witch of Endor. Mm -hmm. Samuel has spoken to him. But he rejected what Samuel said. I'll tell you something. You may not know it. There's people that reject what I say. That's okay. Here's the problem. What God gives me, it comes to pass. It comes to pass. People can say a lot of things, but if it does not come to pass, God did not send them. They can prophesy and jump over chairs and, and run and scream. The scripture says, if a prophet speaks and it comes to pass, you know, you, you know who they are. Yeah. You know who they are. If you were raised and you were enabled, you will reject words that are wise. Some people, as long as you plan with them and they turn it up, oh, you're fine. Aaron did that. Moses, in the presence of God, getting the laws from God, getting the commandment. He comes down. Aaron is participating and allowing the people to do as they will. It angered Moses. And as long as you turn up and you dropping it like it's hot or cold, who knows? Some of you not even in shape, you dropping it. You mess around and bust your hip, shaking and stuff. Some of you, if you walking and shaking, you need to be in shape. I love you. Women, if your husband said to you what size he want and what he likes, you cannot. You know, some women use I had a baby as an excuse and that baby grown. That baby got you that out of shape. Oh, my time is. I love you. This is Roger. I'll holler at you next Sunday. Peace.